Oh, all right. I guess there is a red <laughs> button up there. So My bad. Today, we'll be talking about the men's Final Four and the girls' Final Four. Women's. Or women's Final Four and men's. All right, so... What do you guys think about the... Hold on, can you introduce us all? Oh. Yeah, you're supposed to be the lead of this, so and you do really team. bad at it. So this is a Riley Johnson, Hitchcock Tuer, 8th grade student, Jackson Maynard, Hitchcock Tuer, senior, Brandon Noel, Hitchcock Tuer, senior. You didn't say student for us. Yeah, we're you still said students. student for him. Students, all of us. Really? You didn't introduce yourself. And I'm Easton Otto. Hi, Easton. What Hi, what student are you? Uh, eighth grade. Oh. Of what school? Hitchcock Tour. Okay. Okay. All right, now we're all introduced. All right. And get this show on the road. So, what do you guys think of the men's side? I don't know who's in it. You didn't tell us. We have North Carolina State. No. Oh yeah, you're. A, he's also a leader of the no, show. We have North Carolina State versus Purdue and Alabama versus UConn. Hmm. So let's talk about Purdue versus North Carolina State. North Carolina State coming in at the 11th seed and Purdue at the 1 seed. Purdue, uh, Purdue is, you know, doing what they do best, and North Carolina State is coming out of nowhere with their 11th seed and making it in that Final Four. So what is your opinion on how they've played recently, Jackson? Um, I think NC State is a fun team to watch, but they're not real contenders for national championship. I think they're frauds. Um, Filipowski for Duke could just not get it going um, the other day. And so I think that's why Duke is not in the Final Four because uh, you can blame that all on Filipowski because Jared McCain played great, dropped 32 points, the most by a freshman. Um, and, uh, yeah, I just don't think NC State has what it takes to compete with Zach Eady. He's 7'4", 300 pounds. They have DJ Burns, but he's only 6'9", 270, so... Edie's going to have a heyday, probably drop 30 at least. All right, Brendan, you made some faces over there. What do you think? Um, to say that they're not contenders is a little bold. Uh, they found a way to win uh, all their tournament games, and uh, DJ Burns has played great, but again, going against Zach Edie is going to be a tough task for him. Um, that means that their guards outside are going to have to get it going. Um, they played well all tournament, so we'll see. How will they match up? Because if Purdue's not hitting and NC State can stay in the game, they have a great chance of finding a way to win somehow at the end of the game. I like that answer. I think that DJ Burns gets tired after a while, and I think he's going to have a rough time with Purdue. I agree with Brendan. They are, to say they're not contenders is kind of wild because they've proven themselves up to this point. So, you know. Uh, they were also tied with uh, seven and twenty-three Louisville in their ACC tournament with uh, three brand, minutes to go. Brand new team, brand new team. Really, because the roster is the exact same. Okay, well they've won how many <laughs> tournament games? Four, five, against some of the best teams in the country. Well, Duke they see all the time. That's a given that they're going to compete in that game. Oh, okay. Marquette just pooped the poop the bed. They suck. Marquette, <laughs> Marquette is garbage. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, let's talk about the other side of the bracket. Which is who? Alabama, Alabama. versus UConn. I think Alabama's going to win. Okay. You're, okay. you're well. on drugs. <laughs> um, nobody can compete with UConn this Roll year. Roll Tide. UConn, <laughs> they've won all of their tournament games by, what is it, 25 points at least? Yeah, UConn has dominated the tournament so far. Um, Bama's been in a lot of close games uh, that they pulled out. Um, they're very good at closing games. Um, their three-point shooting as of late has been what's kept them going, um, keeping the momentum moving forward. Their guards are very good on the outside, um, and it'll be interesting to see how they match up against UConn, who, like Jackson said, has really dominated every game so far. So, I just don't think Alabama... Um can compete with UConn. You know, UConn has asserted themselves as the top team, and they're the team to beat. Um, if you look at all the rest of Alabama's games, you know, they beat a six-seed Clemson. Um, I mean, they, Clemson didn't play great. And you go back another game when they beat North Carolina, R.J. Davis had, he was over nine from the three-point line. And 
he's lived at the th- like he's shot so well at the three point line almost forty five percent I want to say this year like he was he's been a great three point shooter for North Carolina and so for him not to show up in a big game um, in the Sweet Sixteen was um, I think that was the X factor of why Alabama won and so I think Alabama's caught a lot of breaks with um, teams playing bad but. Well, they can also be credit to their defense. Yeah, credit that to their good defense. So, I think it's going to be a good game, but then I think Alabama is going to fall short in the fourth and fall behind. Yeah. They play two halves. <laughs> Just so you know. Yeah, I, uh, I also expect UConn to win that game by around 10 or so. Um, it'll be interesting to see, though. UConn is probably going to win, but it'll be cool if Alabama does. Would it? Why? Yeah. Because they dominate in football already. Yeah. Okay. So, men's or women's final four. North Carolina State. Iowa. Iowa, South Carolina State, and UConn. UConn. Yeah, we got UConn facing Iowa. Uh, that game is going to be very good. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Okay. <laughs> Um, Iowa just played LSU last night. That was a great game. Yeah, um, yeah go Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark is a yeah. very good basketball player. Um, but don't sleep on UConn because they are coming along and clicking at the right time. So uh, it'll be a fun matchup between their guards and uh, <laughs> Caitlin Clark. Agreed. Yeah, you know, they say Paige Beckers is a better overall player than Caitlin Clark. That's what they say, yeah, but. That's what they say. Caitlin Clark shoots lights out, so there's. I no think she, see, she sees the floor so well. Yeah. I think that, yeah, like last night versus LSU, she had a lot of a lot of assists and points, but. Yeah, 41 12, and I don't know how many rebounds, but like, nine threes. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. She's a scorer and a passer. So I guess I think that Iowa's going to win, but it's going to be hard to guard guard a Paige Buecher, So Becker. 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 Yep, Beckers. Yeah, she just came back, didn't she? She's been yeah, she was hurt all year last year. Oh, and part of this year too, right? Yeah. I think she was out for a while this year. But she might have been. But she's fun to watch too, so it'll, yeah. be, it'll be a good game to watch for sure. Yeah. Who do you guys think is going to win Iowa? Yeah. I think Iowa's going to pull through. Um, mm-hmm. Hopefully, Caitlin yeah. Clark can get her championship, get her ring, and then move on to the WNBA and dominate their team. I think Iowa showed against LSU that nobody is going to be able to guard Caitlin Clark. Yeah. It'll be interesting. I don't know who UConn's going to put on her. Is Becker's, Probably Beckers. Is Beckers too short, though? Mm-hmm. Doesn't really matter who you put on her. She's going to score. Oh, okay, but you got to give yourself a chance. But if you put a forward on her, she's just going to run right around her. Great. Very interesting. All right. Now, North Carolina State and Purdue. What do you think is going to happen? It's not Purdue. Oh, it's, it's not. South Carolina State. Oh, it's South Carolina South, State. No, just South Carolina. It's North Carolina State versus South Carolina. Yeah, there you go. Um, That's where it's at. You know, it would be really cool to see North Carolina State win in both men's and women's and both get to contend for a national championship at the same time that'd be cool but, but they're both gonna lose uh, i do not see North Carolina they're both State gonna lose beating south carolina on the women's side uh, south carolina has been pretty dominant They've oh wait so that means you basketball. that means you have dj burns somehow beating purdue no i said it'd be cool i didn't say i wanted it to happen i thought it would happen i said it'd be cool if they both made it yeah but they're both gonna lose yeah, that's what i just that's what i'm saying Okay. South Carolina is going to force in women's basketball for the last couple of years, um, and they know how to win. They're well coached. Um, I have them beating North Carolina State. Yeah, it's not. It's not going to be very close. Cardosa for South Carolina. She's really good. Um, in the first three games of the tournament, she shot seventy-four percent from the field. That's wild. You know, yeah. you can say she's a post. She's a post, and so she shoots it right in front of the hoop. But I mean. Still, to get three of four shots to go in the hoop, that's that's pretty good. Yeah, unstoppable. Um, but I would really like to see them in Iowa in the national championship. That'd be a great game. I agree. Same. Do you? Yep. Don't be afraid to go against us. Yeah. Okay. Right. We'll just meet you in the parking lot afterwards. Mm-hmm. So, Iowa versus Purdue. 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 Purdue.
Else? Anything, anything else you want to talk, talk about? about? Jinx. Um, how about that tracking yesterday? You, still, you did well. Yeah. You didn't go, but that's fine. Didn't compete. You didn't even come watch, but I don't know. Thanks for your support. You're you welcome. Yeah. I was watching from home. No, you weren't. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. You definitely liked it. You definitely liked it. I had a drone, and it was filming all of it. Oh, that's good. Yeah. How long did it take for your drone to fly to Brookings? 24 hours. Mm -hmm. I just marked my things in it for you. So it like didn't die out of there. That's a miracle. Yeah. Got some solar panels on that thing. It's very big. The drone or? Yeah. <laughs> the drone. Okay. <laughs> so. Who's going to win it all? For men's? Both. Alright. Men's. Yukon. You're done. You're done. I'm going to take the underdog, Alabama, winning it all. You're weird. Alabama. If Alabama, the wins, shot the three if Alabama wins, they aren't going to compete with NC State or oh, Purdue. No way. Roll tide. I don't, dude, the way that the Alabama's been shooting the three ball, their guards have been dominating all tournament, and I think that they can keep up with um, the posts for either Purdue or North Carolina State. Do you think they can compete with UConn? You earlier you they're, just said that you come by ten. You, you just said you come by ten. I did, but I'm taking the underdog pick in Alabama hmm. to somehow get it done because you guys all said UConn, so I'm taking the underdog, Alabama. All right. For the women's side. Iowa. Iowa. Yo. I'm rooting for Iowa. Yeah, I'm really rooting for Iowa. I really like Caitlin Clark. She's really fun to watch. Um. But I don't think you can beat South Carolina. They're just Cardosa's dominant inside, and Angel Reese showed last night that Iowa doesn't have any big posts. Nobody that can rebound. Mm -hmm. Angel Reese had almost twenty boards. If she mm -hmm. didn't, as she might have had over I think twenty she had boards. Like twenty women. Mm -hmm. So she proved that. Iowa cannot play with a the only good post, and Cardosa's the best post gotta, in the country. You just gotta outshoot. The only sort of you gotta post that they have is a. Uh, what's her name? For Iowa? I don't know. Me neither. It, yeah. uh, they don't have a post. There's literally nobody over like 6 2 or 6 3 on, in know. their string lineup. And now they're gonna replace. Well, I guess we'll see who they are going to go up against. But but it is cool. There's two teams, or there's two schools with both their teams in the Final Four. That is very mm -hmm. neat. UConn and NC State. You don't see that very often. Mm -hmm. Very rarely, rarely do you even see uh, one mm -hmm. program doing that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, watch out for UConn and the women's. I think they, uh, they have a very good chance to beat Iowa. Move on to the national championship. More well rounded team than Iowa maybe is. Yeah. Um, maybe have a better chance to compete with South I Carolina. I think South Carolina and Yukon would be a good game. A very good game. Yeah, but we all want to watch Caitlin Clark one more time. Yeah. yeah. Until she goes to the WNBA. Yeah. She should just declare for the NBA. Yeah, she probably make it. Yeah. What overall do you guys think 2K gives her her first year in the WNBA? 80, 85. <laughs> oh, so you think she's going to be higher than Wemby when he got, he got into it? I think so. She deserves it. Her what was Wemby, 83? Like Wemby was an 84 when he got when he was drafted. I don't know. I mean. I think she's better. She's better. She's, I, well, like, I think she's way better than You look at the competition. So if they 1v1. Like, no. 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 Girls wise. You have to look at it women's. It was a joke. It was a joke. Look at women's. Look at Caitlin Clark, and she can like beat anybody one on one. Yeah. It doesn't matter how good of a defender they are. She's either gonna step back three, or she's gonna drive the hoop and dish. Like, I think she's on another level, and she's only gonna get better. So I think like her starting overall could be like an 85, 87. Yeah. The thing is, they the 2K devs they sleep on rookies. Mm -hmm. So you have to think about that. They're probably gonna be like low 80s for her. I'd say 83, 84. If they do do that, her three-point shot is yeah, still you gonna said be very do. high. You yeah. said do do. <laughs> They're probably gonna lower her other attributes, and uh, her three-point shooting will still be ridiculous to play with. What do you think her three-point percentage will be? 
three point rating. It's it's, it's got to be, be like a 90, 95. 95. It's, it's got to be crazy good. Yeah. You can't not yeah. What do you guys think about uh, Mr. Devin Booker's 52 point game? I guess I didn't catch that. Did was that catch it? Hmm. I was too busy watching girls basketball. Overshadowed. The only time you'll ever hear me say that. <laughs> no. Um, I feel like women's the women's March Madness has okay. has competed very well with the men's it's this gained year. A lot it's, of popularity. it's been a lot of fun to watch. And you know, I think you give a lot of credit to or a lot of credit for that to Caitlin Clark, Paige Beckers, um, even Cardosa a little bit. Sadly, you have to give some of it to Angel Reese just because she brings a following to the sport. Um, and then Juju Watkins from USC. She is good. She's a freshman. And mm-hmm. She took USC and made them a one seed, then yeah. just fell to UConn, who clearly has experience she, winning. Uh, this is UConn's 23rd Final Four under the he- under their current head coach. Highest scoring freshman, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. She had eight last night, or she needed eight going against UConn to beat it. So I'm sure she's like it. Yeah. yeah, she's real good. She she went to Sierra Canyon with uh, Bronny. Mm-hmm. They both went to USC. And then, um, I think it was, I think it might have been Paige Beckers who went to, um, like, college or school with J.J. Reddick, I think it was. J.J. Reddick is really old. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, wait, no, not that student. Yeah, yep. It was. It's somewhere. Pretty sure she's from Minnesota, isn't she? I think she's from Louisiana, but you know how like those really good prospects like yeah, she Joe came up to Minnesota, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, because yep. then you got like you have kids that move all over. Like, why did Cooper Flag play for Maine Elite? And their um, or for his AS. His AAU team, but now he plays at Mount Verde Academy in Florida. Mm-hmm. I think it just doesn't make sense. They're moving around. That's one thing I don't like about those big high school prospects is they just go wherever is good. They need to for the recognition, though. I understand both sides of it. Yeah. Obviously, you don't want to leave your hometown. Like I'd rather ball out in my hometown than go somewhere and play, but if you're if you're that highly talented of a prospect, then you need to get your name out there and play against some competition because otherwise you're going to get overlooked due to a lack of competition. Yeah. If you just win every single game by 40, you're not going to have any competition. And um, what do you guys think was the biggest upset from each side? Like throughout the whole tournament? Mm-hmm. I would say Oakland beating Kentucky. That was a very big upset. Um, hey, I called it, too. Did. When we were here, I said, watch out for Kentucky because they don't play defense. Mm-hmm. Remember that? Yep. Yeah. They've struggled yeah. in the last, they're one and four in the last five tournaments. Yeah. In the last five games they played in the tournament. Um, Can you put that on Coach Calpari for not getting his players ready? Mm-hmm. I don't think you can, but... It is weird that a, a top program like that who can compete with the best teams all year gets to the tournament and choke. Well, one thing one thing years. I see a lot or like that I've noticed is, you know, those teams like Duke and Kentucky, they very rarely make it to the Final Four anymore because they have a lot of one-and-done players. Mm-hmm. And those freshmen don't know what it's like to play in March Madness, and March Madness is a different beast. Mm-hmm. So you find teams like UConn who... These guys have been here for two or three years, mm-hmm. or Purdue. Like Zach Eady's been here all four of his college years. They know what it's like to play in the tournament. That's mm-hmm. where all these teams with freshmen they just don't perform, and so yeah, sometimes the lights get too bright. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So all these veterans who might not be as skilled as the freshmen that are gonna get drafted in a couple months. Um, that's why they succeed, I think. Mm-hmm. That's very interesting. Um, to see how that plays out. I had Kentucky going quite a ways and then they lost first round, but... Yeah. It's just weird, because, like, Kentucky, they have two of the top ten picks in the NBA draft this year. I'd say. But March March Madness is a different beast. 
Yeah. Uh, literally anybody can win, and that's that's just why mm -hmm. it's so great. Oh, I feel like college basketball is starting to become more like guards and not as many posts. Like everyone just shoots the three ball now. Like there's still like quite a few good post players, but like Kentucky doesn't have. I guess it's more defense, but they all are just shoot no defense kind it's of. It's the season. evolution of the game too. You mm -hmm. see a lot of forwards shooting the ball. Yeah, I saw this post on Instagram or Twitter or X, but uh, it was something. It was this guy going off about how Stephen Curry has ruined the game of basketball. And I so I scrolled through the comments, you know, trying to like see what everybody else thought. And a lot of people agreed that it wasn't Steph Curry that ruined the sport or ruined the game of basketball because of the three point shooting. It was the people that wanted to be like Curry. Yeah. He definitely revolutionized the game though. Yeah, he definitely like made three point shots become popular, but I feel like just because he has a talent and he's using it isn't making the game like a there is not like making the game bad like people are choosing to shoot threes he's not making them but that's what that's what they're saying is like he yeah. ruined or the people that want to be like him are ruining the sport because all they're doing is shooting threes because mm -hmm. they want to be as good as him yeah you can credit that to uh not just Steph Curry but the whole NBA shifting and then those guys watching those NBA players and then when they go to the gym that's what they practice and then they find out what their skills are, and that's applied to college basketball now. There's a lot of two-point shooters. Did you guys see the chart? I know it was going around uh, social media of, like, the most taken shots in the NBA yeah. from uh, 2010 or from 2014 to 2024. Um, the only shot that wasn't a three-pointer that's the most taken shot is... Um, like a layup floater area. There's not a single mid range mm, dot. Mid range, mid range just completely disappeared from the game. Yeah. It's literally just a bunch of dots around a three point circle. Mm -hmm. I think I've seen something like that, but I don't think it was quite like that. I think that uh, mid range, if you know how to use it and can score from mid range, I think you're going to be good because no one shoots it and I don't think the defenders will be ready for it. Yeah, I agree. That NBA playoffs would be fun to watch. Yeah. What do, you, what do you think is going to be kind of switching up to NBA? <coughs> the Cleveland Cavaliers. Yeah. Well, we've I'm actually been playing sure. really bad lately. Um, I feel like we rushed Donovan Mitchell back. I don't think he's quite ready to be back again. Um, so hopefully he starts to take a little bit more rest days. He's already out of contention for awards, so mm -hmm. he might as well sit to the last four or five games of the year, mm -hmm. which that means he sits three. Because, you know, the season's going to an end. We got like eight eight to ten games left. Yep. And so hopefully he can get back before the play. I'm very excited to watch the Western Conference. It'll be a lot of fun. Um, we got the Minnesota Timberwolves, who have not mm -hmm. been in the playoffs. They, they're new to... Um, contending. They've been pretty bad the last couple of years, um, but they're finally putting something together there. Um, Anthony Edwards is very good, and they've just built a great team of role players around him. Um, Nas Reed has been balling out for them. Um, Mike Conley, is he still there? Mm -hmm. yeah. there? There's, I don't know. There's a guard that I'm thinking of for them. D'Angelo was on the Lakers. Yeah. 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 I think it is Conley. It's Conley. They have a veteran guard in Conley. Yeah. Um, very, very good. Carl Anthony Towns will be back, hopefully for the playoffs, and uh, they'll be ready to go. I think it's, it would be cool to see the Wolves go far, but I don't. I feel like they have so many young players that haven't, like, experienced that stuff. Like, mm -hmm. once you get to, like, the bigger, better teams, I don't think that they'll show but. They could. I just don't. I know there's there's a lot of powerhouses per yeah. se, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and some of them are in the play-in. Like you can never count out 
a Devin Booker, Bradley Beal, and yeah. Kevin Durant team. I think but mm-hmm. they're in the play-in. I think yeah. that they're going to go pretty far because I went, like the Nuggets Suns game. But they're a seven seed. They're going to have to play one of the top two teams. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? But yeah. still, That'll be tough to pull If they off. can beat the Nuggets, they should have a good contend with, or they should play, be able to play a lot of the teams in the NBA if they can beat the Nuggets. But yeah. then, uh, very interesting. you can never count out Steph Curry and the Warriors. Nope, they're, they're always in contention. They're, they're right in there too. LeBron and the Lakers are making their average yeah. push to playoffs. Yeah. You can never count LeBron. Yeah. How many... LeBron, D'Angelo De- Russell's been off, like, very hot lately yeah. from three-point range. Yeah, D'Lo stepped up a lot. But he, like, ha- he has just broke the Lakers' three-point record. Yeah, so which is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> from one left-handed player to another, from Elton Baylor to D'Angelo De- Russell. Yeah. I think that uh, the Suns and the Timberwolves are going to be two people, or teams to match. I got the Thunder versus the Celtics, and the Celtics win. The Thunder are very good. Um, I enjoy watching them play basketball. Um, but speaking of uh, the Eastern Conference and the Celtics, I don't know if anybody is going to top them in the East. I think. I don't think it's possible. I think Shea is really good. I think once or after this season, or I guess even this season, he'll be like a just a powerhouse player that no one can stop. But. Something the Eastern Conference teams have to look out for is Jimmy Butler's back in the exact same situation as last year. Are they the eighth seed right They're now? They're in the eighth seed right now. So they got to lose their first play-in game and then win against the nine or ten seed and get that eight spot again. Yeah. That'd be crazy. You have that, that playoff Jimmy Butler we have seen every single year. Just can't get it done. I think if he continues to have that same thing as last year, he's going to be a very scary player. Yeah. Yeah, and that Miami Heat team, I mean, it's all set up for them. They're just, they're not a regular season winning team. And they've proven that in the last couple of years, even like the bubble season, they weren't great. Yeah. They just make the push at the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anything else you want to talk So about? who's your... Who's your NBA Finals teams and who's winning? Mm. You got it? Uh, I'm going to say Milwaukee with Dame and Giannis for the East. And for the the West, it's going to either gonna be one of these three teams. The Lakers, if they continue to have their push, and D'Angelo Russell stays hot. The Timberwolves or the Thunder. It's going to be one of those three teams. Yeah, I'd really enjoy to watch the Timberwolves make the NBA Finals um, just because they haven't been there a lot. Um, and also, um, in the Eastern Conference, I'd like to see somebody other than the Celtics or the Bucks make it, maybe the Knicks. Um, the Cavs. The Cavs. I think the Magic are up there, too. Um, so I I think I'd, it'd be really interesting to see two teams face off in the Finals that haven't been there. Um, that'd be very enjoyable. Mm-hmm. But overall, um, my pick has to be... Um, either the Celtics or the Thunder, unfortunately. I think that the Thunder and it's kind of a hard, like... It's not a hard question. It is. There's only ten teams to pick from. But you don't know until, like, they play because anything can happen. I feel like the NBA is not as much no, of anything can happen. To, not prone to upsets as much. Yeah. But you never know. Um, it's a seven-game series. It's not a one-game series. It's not one game like the like March Madness. Mm-hmm. That's why you see so many upsets. Yeah. I think that the Thunder and the, the Cavaliers will be yep. in the championship, and the Cavaliers take it all home. Yep. Win the championship. Yep. All right. Is that all for you, Um. Yep. I no. hope it's. I actually hope it's the Cavs in the Lakers, so Daddy Brown Brown can lose to the Cavs. I don't know if the Cavs can, can beat. Well, Brown. at that point, I wouldn't really care who wins. I'd be cheering for the Cavs, but if Daddy Brown Brown won another championship, I'd be cool with that. I got. I, I got cheer for my Lakers in this situation. I don't think, so. I don't think the Lakers have a chance. 
I mean, no. okay, well, then you are a LeBron hater because we all know who he is in the playoffs. Yeah, we know who LeBron is in the playoffs. We've seen Austin Reeves lately. He's hey, been fire. Question. And then don't even get me started on D'Lo. He's literally him right now. And then we have the question. same old Anthony Davis. Who's better? LeBron yeah, who will James. probably get hurt five more times this season with eight games left. LeBron James or Michael Jordan? LeBron James. LeBron James. I'm sorry, Brendan. Michael Jordan. LeBron James. Had <laughs> a boy. Okay, but you do you guys say? have the argument? No, not as much as Jackson or Brendan, probably. See, me and Brendan will talk about this. Yeah, I know. It only comes up probably once a month, I'd say. Uh, two months. Two once months. a yeah, but. It's a blue moon, but the argument only changes slightly every time. Yeah, it's literally the same argument, say. but they're. I feel like they're both valid arguments. Yeah. And okay. that's why we keep having the argument. Mm-hmm. Because so I always think I'm right. Like, and you always think you're right. Yeah, we uh, we could save that for another video. Like, like every, everybody yeah. brings up the on my six rings to four rings. But we'll if we're going off of rings, we have video. to go to Bill hey, Russell with a weapon. Next week, uh, we bring, bring your arguments. Yeah. Yeah. For LeBron, better than Michael? Yep. A 3v1? Right. Yep. All right, let's find out. Let's hey, find you out know who came time. back from a 3-1? LeBron James. If you want, Brendan, you can bring a friend to help you argue against us. I don't need a friend. <laughs> All right. Find out next time on the podcast next week. Watch out for it. Let's go. Hit it.